We all know the story of the HMHS Britannic, the third and final ship of the Olympic-class liners, the younger sister of the RMS Olympic and the Titanic, and what was planned to be the ultimate ocean liner in the White Star fleet. If you've been following us for over a year, you certainly have seen our real-time animation, where we painstakingly recreated the Britannic sinking, working with some of the top historians on the subject. Construction began alongside the Titanic as she was being completed, but construction stalled when the Titanic disaster occurred. She was ultimately requisitioned by the British Admiralty and converted to a hospital ship, beginning service in late 1915 and participating in the evacuation of the Dardanelles. She returned to Belfast, where she was built on June 6, 1916, having been released from the service of the British Navy and being permitted to become the ocean liner she was designed to be. The interiors were finished, she started to be fitted out, but after a few months, she was called back into service as a hospital ship, and she was once again gutted. It's very important to remove these luxury interiors from the ship during her military service. For one, she would certainly be abused by those on board, vandalism, graffiti, and if not deliberate, then at least accidental staining from the medical staff or the wounded. She served in the Mediterranean, ferrying wounded troops off the battlefields and back to England. On the 21st of November, 1916, she hit a mine. Fortunately, there were no wounded on board. However, there was a full crew, members of the Royal Army Medical Corps, and 77 nurses, including Violet Jessup, who was on board the Titanic when she sank, and the Olympic when it collided with the Hawk. The Britannic was lost and currently sits in a few hundred feet of water off of the Greek island of Kea. However, the interiors that were removed from the ship, which include a lot of the public spaces, including the first-class grand staircase, the lounge, the second-class library, and some of the cabins, were auctioned off from Harlan and Wolf in 1919. Many of us are familiar with the fact that a lot of the Olympics interiors still exist today in in places like Annick, in Sheffield, and you can still go visit them. But there are a number of private homes across Ireland which host these treasures from the Britannic as part of their fittings as well. Some of these locations are well known, such as the house in Belfast, but some of them are completely secret and have never been revealed before. In fact, this video is the first time they have ever been seen. This is the first time their owners have given permission for them to be publicly shown. So this is a real treat for us. When our team visited Britain and Ireland last month, we visited many of these homes, taking extensive measurements, reference photos, and behind the scenes videos to share with you. Our first location is the famous Britannic House in Belfast. We have been given access to what we've been calling the Britannic House. So all of this wood was designed and more or less finished. It may even have been installed on the Britannic, or at least it was at the fitting out wharf ready to go. After the ship sank, this stuff was auctioned off in 1919, and a lot of local architects and engineers bought the wood and installed them into civic buildings or houses like right here. And you see a very nice mix of all these different parts of the ship. We expected to see, what, two different Types of rooms, mm -hmm. yes, um, and we found a total of oh, four or five, five, maybe five, six. There's always going to be areas that even the people that are here already don't necessarily know about. We kept seeing what I thought was the same paneling again and again and again. I mean, it's easy to just pass by everything and think, oh, that's the same panel, it's the same panel. But now it looks like there's another room up here. It wasn't until I said I was finished reviewing everything where I suddenly turned around and noticed, like, oh, this is this isn't the same paneling. This is from. A totally different cabin. Like, wow. Oh, uh, the paneling downstairs is all from a Louis the Fifteenth style bedroom A, as it's known. It was almost like the basic style cabin that they would outfit the upper echelon style of cabins. But here, it took us a while to realize it's different. It's a different style of cabin, so it's a total different room. I thought it was a sitting room, but now I just think it's another one of the Louis again. The paneling is the same, but the way they have integrated the carvings is is obviously different right here. There's another room yeah. added onto the list. Obviously there's the first class lounge, bits of that downstairs. Maybe this is actually where one of the side stained glass windows went. This is greatly different than what is in Olympics carvings in Attic. Now this exact same type of design is up there, but this is what's different and this is what's different. To show again that the craftsmen were unique to each one of their yeah. carvings. But it still has a bunch of flowers and either ribbons and leaves. This design is still the same. All over in Anakin House in Dublin, the exact same type of panel. 
A second class smoking room uh, around the fireplace. It's actually a window surround. This is from the second class smoking room. Yes, there we go. Well, that's interesting. We'd, yes. We've been told it was the portal of a door. Almost. Uh, windows. Windows, yes. So you think it's, a, yeah, you're right. It's definitely the windows. Okay. Then there's tiny bits of Herman Wolf style bedroom B, which was a basic cabin. Some of the door frames. That's, that's what this door is. Frame. That's but door cut it that side to fit. Yeah, that's what that is. Weren't you wondering if that other piece was bedroom style B? And now we're seeing bedroom style B in other so, places. Yeah. 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 Most of the wood is from Harlan Wolf style A, which is also known as the French style, or Louis the Fifteenth. That's the Louis I do know. Then there's also some pilasters from one of the best sitting rooms on board the ship, which I think is now Louis the Sixteenth. And those are alongside the fireplace, right in the corners, and they have the drops and the nice capitals. Right here, now there's another style. Maybe it's Louis the... 14th. That's where we get into the mystery cabinets, which are, there are no photographs of. They are somewhat modeled after the sitting rooms because there were several sitting rooms of Louis the 14th and Louis the 16th. We never know what they look like, but maybe they look like this. This is why I got so excited about like, maybe this is the one. Maybe this is the one that we've always been looking for. But this right here, which is the sitting room from the movie. But they had that in a different... They had it in mahogany. Yeah, and they had... That they was had a mahogany too. veneer, yes. But Britannic's Regent's sitting room, its paneling was found as well. And it was in terrible shape. The person who found that, they had it redone. Like you said, you said you had someone come in and look at it and they could strip the wood or, or just repolish the wood, I think. Yeah. They had someone redo it and they added the gilt back to it where they thought it would belong. But when they were restoring it, they discovered there was very little gilt. And they think that by Britannic's time, probably Titanic's time, taste had already changed so much from the very first Sister Ship Olympic where there was still too much ornamentation and gilt yeah. that they wanted to cut back some. Because on Olympic, if this was that cabin in the movie, all this would be gilded, all this would be gold, mm -hmm. and it would be so much. They would have removed that. And on Titanic and the wreck, that seems to have been proven because a lot of that is still there, but it's plain mahogany. And when they found the Britannic wood from that region sitting room, there was no gilding on it actually. But they finished it, redid it, and they applied the gilding back on it, so now it looks like there is. So kind of a weird that's kind of an iffy thing to talk about because they refinished it, but they refinished it to the way they think it should have looked like, not the way that it really was. That's the fun thing about like historical artifacts and finds like this is it's never ending. It's always something that's evolving. You think you understand it, and then you find something new, and you're like, well, I have to change everything that I believed. And it's not the first class staircase. It doesn't go with any of our other cabins so far. It looks like they're basic paneling that they would apply in modern cabins. When it gets less ornate and it's more simplistic like this, it gets, it's ironically more difficult to identify. It's nice when there are lovely carvings like that, and it's like, that's definitely this style cabin. I'm but it's, when it's like this, you just say, I know I've seen that somewhere, but where have I seen it? Because this definitely is from the ship. It's oak, but what is it? All right, get the crowbar. This is the one that's going to annoy me all day long. <laughs> this is the one that's going to... I'm going to go back to America and we can be frustrated with this one. Do you sleep over this one? Yes, yeah, this is the one. The most, the, the most simple one. You know, up here, it's definitely, when it hits the light, you can definitely see how... This reflection and wonderful it is. Yeah, I can I can see my hand in it right here. I can it's like a mirror. I can right behind my shadow. You probably can't see it in the camera, sorry, but I can see my hand reflecting back at me from my perspective. And that's really cool actually. <laughs> this is original to the ship. This little design right here. This would be at the edge of a wall basically, and so that passengers didn't just bump into the sharp edge. They rounded the corners. And they always fit the edge to match the sharp edge of the molding for this little corners detail here. Leaving Belfast, we were invited into another private home, this time outside of Dublin. We can't be any more specific about the location, but this is the first time anyone has publicly seen this. We know that after the Olympics set sail, they, they modified a lot of the interior designs of her for use on the Titanic. Some things that they felt were improvements, some things that they just wanted to change around a little bit artistically or for practical reasons. However, because the Titanic was so poorly documented due to her short lifespan, what these changes were is very unclear. Seeing and measuring and photographing these surviving pieces of the Britannic help us to know what these changes might have been, considering the fact that a lot of these changes would have been integrated on the Titanic and then carried over onto the Britannic, the third and final ship of the Olympic class. This is the absolute first paneling I have ever seen from any of these ships. You guys have explored the White Swan when you first went there two years ago and I saw all the pictures, saw all the videos, but I've never been able to come here and touch it. It's just, I, I'm still lost for words. It's one of those things that you work up so much over such a long time and when you get there you just, you can't comprehend it. This is great. This panel here would have come out jutting into the room as a section divider. Yep. 
and then this would have been open, and you would have been able to see right through it. There would have been glass, yeah, but you could, you could see right through it. Enormous glass pane as well. I know. And then right here, would this have been the intersection into the real wall, or would it have been a little farther back? Obviously, there's some division here that is needing to be concealed. So I'm thinking this might just come back to the wall, and then here would have been the right the yeah, side of the ship. That, and then you would have the bay windows. And that would be the end of that panel in there. It would, it would join with the side of the... The ship. Yeah. Uh, going on to so I, I'd be in the promenade yeah, right now. Yeah, that's the promenade. Yeah. This is the A deck promenade. Yep. All right. One thing that you can notice here from this exposed piece is where it would have slotted in and where it would have joined with the other pieces. Um, so you can't see the reverse side where there's the I think it's felt. Is it? They had felt on the reverse side mm -hmm. with the stamp, so that's still sealed away. Um, but you can see where it was connected previously. You do come across where they've basically forced it to, to fit into this space by cutting it down. Um, so the, I mean, there's some very nice uh, small cut off bit of panelling somewhere. It's probably not around anymore. Now we also get to see some of the second class library. Uh, this is obviously the second class um, library panelling right here. This is the trim that went along the windows on the outboard side right. and the forward and aft bulkheads. We have some of the very simple design of the second class library paneling right here. We have some of the, uh, this is actually a window capping. And then here, first class lounge, library. All sorts of windows and panels and even some of the dado being used as a bar here. A lot of these windows right here would have looked out Same onto thing. the second class C deck promenade looking through these windows and then these wider ones would have looked into the second class stairs on C deck. This one's the hatch. This is what? I think this is the original mirror. So I think this one's the only, this is one of the only two ones in the room that had the original mirror because there's a hatch behind it. Oh. So they were faux windows. Since this one is a little bit more gone and deteriorating, it's probably like the original mirror. So it's the same method they employed in the yeah. Turkish bars when they moved those portholes inboard. And what they did on Olympic when they added the cabins on A deck aft Grand Circus, they made the windows mirrored and all the rest of them are not, as you can see. The door frame is the original door frame entrance to the library, and then we have this wall panel right here. So we would be able to take these lower pieces right here at the bar yes. and stick them under these wall pieces, and that's basically a full representation of the wall in the second class library. More or less, you're just missing the chair rail. The chair rail, I think we could find it. We'll look for a... Mm, it's... I don't see it. This is part of it. This is the sycamore part of the chair rail, and it comes out like this, and I really want it because I need that. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh, here we go. Some of the chair rail. Right. Right here. Tis it. So with regard to the providence of these pieces, the story behind them, Britannic sank during World War I after hitting a mine, and these pieces were never used. So they started auctioning them off in 1919. Now in 1916, in Dublin, was the Easter Rising, where a huge portion of the center of the city was destroyed. It was really damaged because there was a big fight between the Irish Republicans and the British Army. A lot of it had to be demolished afterwards. Now there was a theater right next to the post office, which was the epicenter of the fighting, that was being reconstructed, and they went up to Belfast, Harlan Wolf, and they bought this paneling and they installed it in their theaters. They installed it as wall fixtures, and, and they did some modifications to it. They most likely put these lights in then, so these are some beautiful vintage lights. We think they're vintage to the theater. And then eventually the theater was torn down, and the pieces were sold off and installed in this building right here. And that is how we have it. For the longest time, they were not known to be from the Britannic. They were believed to be off of some smaller ship that maybe ran aground, ran aground off Cork or something like that. It was only recently that they were identified as Britannic, and that has not yet been publicly revealed. So we actually have the privilege of being the first people to show this. 
We're grateful to these homeowners and private collectors who have led us into their home, served us tea, and told us how they came to be the curators of these fine treasures. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, search Titanic Honor and Glory, like and subscribe to this video, and check out our website, www.titanichg.com, so we can continue to build the Titanic digitally for you to experience, and also share the stories of all ocean liners of the era with you here on YouTube.